Right, James, here are big races upon us. Um, you got four nice runners on the day. Um, let's start with your big horse in race uh, number f uh, in race four, at my command. Yeah, he's uh, he's very well, eh, John. Um, obviously, his last run, you know, it, it looked like he just got a bit stuck with that heavy going, but you know, can't discredit him on that run by any means. Um, bringing him back to a trip that I think's more suited to him, the fourteen hundred. Don't have the best of draws, and it does look to be quite a competitive field. But looking at the field, it looks like there is going to be a genuine pace, and I, I think that's going to play into his hands. We can just get him nice and settled in a good rhythm, and, and let him run him from there. And you know, if if you look at the the merit ratings in the race, he he must be the respected or having the the highest handicap with the weight that he's carrying. Um, yeah, very well at home. Very happy with him. I, I wish he had a bit of a better draw, but with how, uh, how I see the race being run out, I don't think it's going to be too much of a factor to play into how he runs. Perfect. Then race five in the, in the Volkerbrook Oaks, you've got Frances Ethel. She hasn't put a foot wrong at the moment. No, she hasn't put a foot wrong. Um, looks to be a very progressive filly. You know, on the up, every time I've stepped up to a bigger challenge, you know, she's come and she's proven it to us. So. Very happy with her. Um, obviously, this is a, a really big step up, carrying level weight with some of you know the top proven horses that have run in features, group ones. Uh, so a big challenge for her. I, I don't think she's going to have any problem seeing the trip out and on her work and well-being. You know, with with how progressive she's been, I think you must respect her on the day. And then in nine, in the ninth race, you've got uh, your July winner, Winchester Mansion. Yeah, um, Winchester. He's also doing very well at home. Um, you know, his, his run into the Summer Cup uh, wasn't wasn't ideal in the sense of how his preparation went. There was always a, a little niggle here, a little niggle there. So, you know, it never really played into our factor. And, and in saying that, you know, I don't think he disgraced himself. He only ran four lengths behind and, you know, he ran in a straight line with the rest of the field. So he's had the necessary time off. Um, we've treated him accordingly. His work and well-being going into this race, um, probably the best I've had him since the July. So. Very, very happy with him. I wish we had a better draw, but um, yeah, I'm very happy with him. I'm, I'm quite bullish that he'll run a good race. Good in race 10, the last, the 2850, you got Crimson King, won a nice race his last start. Yeah, he won a very nice race last time out. You know, we, we put him back to a trip that, you know, looks more suitable to him. Um, obviously, stepping up in trip now, which I don't think is going to be a problem for him by any means. Uh, should have come on a ton from that race. You know, striker, he's, he always gets the best out of horses without using the crop, but you know, I, I think um, I think that's a race where you know he is going to come on from that kind of ride. So, very happy with him. Very happy with his well-being. A lot of the field looks like they're out at the weights, which I think plays massively into our favour. Um, only one or two horses that I'm concerned about, but barring that, on his work and well-being, you know, I, I think he is one of our. our or I can't discredit the rest of the four or the rest of the three, but very very happy with him. I think he's also going to be a big run on the day. Perfect, James. Can't wait for Saturday. Some nice racing. I uh, hope you have a good day. Oh, thank you so much.